What's up, duelists? Shout out to everyone who followed me on Twitter yesterday. Also, shout out to everyone who enjoyed the video yesterday. Yesterday's video was a banger. Dark Samorg, Dark World. That was that was a hype video. I had a good time making that one. This one, this one was a little bit more of a challenge. We got the yellow baboon deck that you guys voted for on the poll. When I made the Dark Samorg deck, that was what was winning on the poll, and then all of a sudden there was a swing vote. Stop the count, alright? And everyone was like, yellow baboon, I need the monk. I must return to monk. Baboon together strong. So, I put together this nice little baboon beast down rat box deck to play for you guys. I've got a couple of different replays against meta decks. I've played about seven matches with it. I'm going to show you guys three of those matches. Before we get into that stuff, of course, yeah, you know, follow me on Twitter, E3Yu-Gi-Oh, at E3Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm going to be tweeting like new deck ideas. I'm going to be tweeting fire cards that I pick up in the mail. I'm going to be tweeting some cool stuff. Definitely check that out. Check out the Twitter. At the time this video is going up, probably be tweeting about a nice little shiny ultimate brain control that I got from a user named Call Me Nevermore. Shoutouts to him. Anyway, deck list, deck list, deck list. You've got Giant Rat. Giant Rat is kind of your beater. He just attacks and attacks and attacks. Reminds me of Hades. I don't know if any of you guys have played Hades. If you've played Hades, leave a comment below. Tell me your favorite part about that game. I love Hades. I'm a Hades speedrunner at heart. Anyway, Giant Rat's great with Yellow Baboon because you can crash your rats and then fill up your grave with beasts and banish them for your Yellow Baboon. There's a lot of times that come up. Unfortunately, none of the replays I'm going to show you, but you'll crash the rats, like one or two. You'll special summon out the Baboon. You'll special summon out a Dyna from the deck, and you'll attack. Attack, 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 and your opponent can't really special summon, they can't really do anything, they're facing down to 2600. It's pretty powerful. A few other rat options, you've got Rescue Cat, of course. Rescue Cat can get Airbellum or Raikou. Oftentimes in this deck, Rescue Cat's just going to be a one card level 5, and that's totally fine because this is just a super beatdown aggro deck. You can also get Injection Fairy Lily, which is probably the card I get the most. I'm going to be honest. This card is super broken. I am surprised it's at 3 in Edison format and no one's really found a way to abuse it. It's a dummy strong card. And there's a lot of cool little niche applications. In one of the replays, I was able to attack over a Shura while the opponent had a Kalut in hand with the Injection Fairly. So there's a lot of little things that come up with Injection Fairly. It's a very powerful card, very slept on. It's also a debris target. I'm sure someone can make something work somewhere. We've also got the green baboons. The green baboons are pretty good against stuff that destroys our giant rat, like torrential mirror force, that kind of thing. We can surprise drop a green baboon into the graveyard with phoenix wing wind blast, or we can mill it off of a Raikou. We've also got two super nimble mega hamsters as just nice little starters to help support our triple Caius. One gigantes as a way to special summon, not be too reliant on the normal summon, also as like an additional sort of heavy storm type effect. And then we got Grammel, which is another great rat target. Gores, of course, because it's Gores, and Magic Cylinder, because this deck deals a lot of damage, but then sometimes, like, falls apart in the later game when the opponents are able to stabilize. Magic Cylinder is a really great card at getting in, like, the last, like, two to 3,000 points of damage against decks that are trying to Synchro or decks that are trying to summon, like, Red Eyes, Darkness Metal, and whatnot. Return from the Different Dimension. This card, I cited out a lot. It's only really good with the Gigantes and the Yellow Baboons. You don't really banish otherwise. You're kind of relying on your opponent to banish your stuff. But it's fine, it's fine. If you do draw the yellow baboon and the rat stuff, you can put together a really powerful return place. In the sideboard, you've got triple DD Warrior. This card is really good, but it also is mandatory, unlike DD Warrior Lady. So opponents can play around it by doing things like attacking into it with a dandelion token or like attacking it with a Raikou or something, and then attacking directly with their bigger monsters. This is definitely better in matchups where your opponent doesn't have a lot of little creatures that they can equitably trade with your dd warrior i've got one shiba warrior taro this card is really really cool it's designed off of kazuki takahashi's own shiba dog i had to include it absolutely adorable little lad can't be destroyed by battle very difficult for some decks to deal with like dragons and whatnot bring it in in those matchups also got a couple of creature swaps a lot of shitty creatures that we want to give away in our deck some matchups that's pretty good. Got the Cold Wave and the True Nade for the matchups where you need them. A couple Dusts. Of course, the Hand Hate cards. And a Lone Deep Prison because in Edison format, are you really building a sideboard without a random Deep Prison or two? No. Anyway, leave a like. I want to see... Hmm. Yesterday's video got a lot of views. It got like 
I don't know, like 2,000 views or something. I want to see what's what's a reasonable number of likes to ask for, I guess. Hmm. Hmm. 7 billion? 7 billion likes. If every one of you who enjoys Edison format, which is every person on the planet, they just don't know it yet, likes this video, we could get to 7 billion likes. I think it's reasonable. I think it's realistic. Extra deck, Gotems. That's it. That's all you need to know about is the Gotems and the Life Transfer a little bit, but mostly the Gotems. You can actually make Gotems with Life Transfer and Shiva Warrior. Hmm. Fun fact. Fun fact. Anyway, see you guys in the matches. The first match, match number one, is up against El Maverick. El Maverick is playing Black Wings, and I'm, of course, playing the Baboon deck. I lose the Rock, Paper, Scissors, unfortunately, and my opponent, well, look at their hand. <laughs> I mean, there's not much to say. One thing that I want to focus on in this match in particular is I recently uploaded a Blackwing video. And in that video, I had an updated list with like triple Armageddon Knight, triple Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. If you haven't already watched that video, definitely check it out. There's a giveaway in that video as well. Definitely enter that video or enter that giveaway. I made a few changes to the Blackwing deck and I want to focus on the opponent's Blackwing deck and see if those changes would have helped them in this match. And I think there are a couple instances where those changes would have made the difference for them. In this hand, they start off with Bora, Black Whirlwind. They've got Heavy Storm, Solemn Judgment, and Dad. So their their hand is <laughs> their hand is fucking stacked. They're gonna search for Blizzard. They should honestly actually search for Kalut here. I think it's a bit of a misplay to search for the Blizzard, but yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter because their hand's so busted. They elect not to set the Solemn Judgment. That's something that kind of surprises me, but at the same time, it makes a little bit of sense. If we break their board, they might want a heavy storm and they don't want their Solemn Judgment to be there. If I was playing, I would have probably set the Solemn Judgment. At this point in the game, you can you can pretty much do whatever you want. I also would have searched for Kalut, but uh, hey, that's just me. Bora here, uh, awkward starter, honestly. Awkward starter. It does work with the Whirlwind, but like, I don't know. I think I would have preferred an Armageddon Knight, either over this Soroka or this Bora. It would have made the, the Blizzard that they end up searching a little bit better. Anyway, I set Hamster, I set Magic Cylinder, but my hand is fucking trash. Let's be honest, it's pretty weak here. Thankfully, they didn't search the Kalut, so they're not going to be able to get over this Hamster. But they do draw an Icarus attack. Another one of the changes I made in the new deck is that I cut Icarus attacks in favor of Phoenix Wing Windblast. Opponent's going to Tribute set a Summon for Sirocco in main phase 2. This is a little awkward, right? Because they've already had to uh, minus 1 themselves in order to get another search out of the Whirlwind. So the Whirlwind hasn't actually net them any card advantage as of yet. They're going to search for Shura the Blue Flame, keep the monster chain going. They're going to set the Icarus attack, and they're going to pass. We're going to flip Raiko. I am going to try to force the Icarus attack. My thought process here is that if they Icarus targeting the Raiko and the Hamster, I'm okay with that. I get a two for one, basically, because the Hamster traded for the Sirocco and the Icarus attack. And if they target the back row and the Hamster, I can then tribute for Caius and banish their Black Whirlwind, cutting them off. So... I'm, I'm pretty okay with forcing the Icarus attack here. I don't really want to go after the Black Whirlwind quite yet because otherwise I'm not forcing the Icarus attack if that's what they have set. If that's not what they have set, then I get to clear the star or the Sirocco and then I can sack the Raiko for the Caius and target the Black Whirlwind either way. We get a little fortunate. We do mill. Oh, just kidding. It's Yellow Baboon. Fucking not Green Baboon. Miserable. I hate that this card can't be activated from the graveyard. Why? Why can Yellow Baboon not come out from the graveyard? It's so balanced. I hate it. I wish it was broken. Ryko pops, they do Icarus the background, the hamster, we are going to drop the Caius, banish the Whirlwind, attack directly for 2400, but it's just not going to be enough. Opponent picks up another Boar of the Spear, not great, not great, they're going to make a Goyo and then take our Caius. No reason for them to drop Dark Armed quite yet, well, I don't know. Let's see, was there a reason? I actually think there was, I think the opponent kind of misplayed here. I think they could have very happily dropped a Dark Armed plus a Bora here. They could have gone, okay. Hear me out. They go Bo or Blizzard Summon Bora, Special the Other Bora in hand, Special the Dark Arm Dragon, Goyo take the Caius, and then they have a full board plus a Solemn Judgment, and I have to answer that? Yeah, it just doesn't seem realistic. It just doesn't seem realistic that I can answer that. I think the opponent uh, plays a little passively here, which is probably fine because their hand is so stacked. They don't really need anything else. I Exile Force their Goyo, I Gigantes attack over the Exile Force, and then, er, not Exile Force, over the Caius, and then they top deck a second Whirlwind to make you know, insult to injury. They have the absolute best Blackwing hand. They're able to put together 8,000 damage, and we're going to go to game two. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. All right, game two. I get to go first, which is great. They do open Whirlwind again, but 
They have a couple of bricks. They have a second Vayu and a Soroka, which I'm assuming they're playing three of. If one of these cards was an Armageddon Knight, their hand would be insane. But since neither of these cards is an Armageddon Knight or a Phoenix Wing Windblast or one of the other cards that I added to those decks, this hand's a little weak. I'm gonna keep it a buck. It's a little weak. All right. Opening up. I have pretty similar hand to last game, but I'm going first and I have bottomless, which is great because these traditional Blackwing decks, they don't play super well into bottomless. You cut off their normal summon, they kind of fucking lose, no cap. So I summon the Arabellum, I set the bottomless, and then I pass. The opponent has an interesting turn here. I think they could have honestly set the Dark Bribe, set the Whirlwind, set a Vayu, and then next turn tried to go for this Sirocco plus the Black Whirlwind with the Dark Bribe backup, but instead they are just like, fuck it, I'm gonna lose to Bottomless Trap Hole, and that's exactly what happens. They decide to lose the game. Arabellum's gonna attack, I hit Vayu. At this point in the game, I don't know they actually play two Vayu, so I'm just like, fuck, I hit their one Vayu. But later on, I noticed that they they were actually playing two Vayu, and there wasn't much in their hand I could have hit that would have mattered too much. Main phase two, I Caius the Black Whirlwind. Don't want to deal with that advantage engine if they are able to find another monster. They top deck deck Devastation Virus. Uh, another brick here, another brick here. They're not able to put another monster into play with 2,000 or more. Another reason I maybe would have waited on the, on the Sirocco, because you do have, what, triple Icarus, double deck dev post board. You really need that Sirocco to stick around. Playing it in the bottomless trap hole is a losing move for sure. Here, I could do a couple different things. I could have rescue catted, I could have done whatever, but I wanted to play around Icarus, so I just, Caius attack, kept it simple, set the Raikou. Here they summon Blizzy, I don't know why. I guess bring back the Vayu just to protect their life points, attack over my set. Raikou's gonna pop their Dark Bribe. We are gonna mill the Green Baboon, so we're just in a great position here. We're just in a great position. The cat still has two targets. We have one Raikou and one Airbellum still left in deck, so we can make a level five with it next turn if we want to. I elect to just go for Giant Rat, however, because I want to play around Kalut. Giant Rat attacking over the Blizzard. If they Kalut, I can Special Summon Injection Fairy Lily and still clear both monsters. So that's my thought process here. They have no Kalut. Gigantes attacks. Kai's attacks. Next turn, they summon the second Blizzy. They have an Icarus attack and a Deck Dev. Now here I get myself into a bit of trouble. No cap. <laughs> they are able to Icarus attack. Clear our two bigger monsters. And I'm like, all right, I can play a little slow. I got a magic cylinder, they're low. I can attack with the giant rat. I can chill out for a while. I can put some pressure on one turn at a time. I'm up four cards. What's the worst that could happen? Here, they top deck Gale, top deck Kalut. They're able to summon the Gale, have the giant rat. They attack here, and I'm just like, what's the worst that could happen? I'm gonna get a summon from my deck. Whatever. They Kalut, I'm just like, what is my opponent doing? Giant rat special summons the injection fairly. Lily. I'm like, I'm gonna kill him next turn but then they hit me with the main phase two deck dev. I was not expecting this. This almost brought him back into the game. Fortunately for us, we have two really, really good live back rows. That's gonna keep us keep us alive. We reveal heavy storm and we don't hit another monster for this deck dev. They draw a second deck dev and I mean, that's just that's just the, that's the problem with the card. We top deck Book of Moon. Don't need to set it here in case they top deck something like heavy storm. Here we top deck Solemn Judgment. We don't mirror force the Kalut, and that's because we don't really mind this Kalut being here. If we draw a giant rat, we can crash with it, tutor anything from our deck. It's a weaker monster. Most of our deck gets over it. If they summon another monster, we can mirror force both of them. So I'm kind of just like, eh, whatever. And they do actually summon another monster. They top deck Ashura, attack with both, and we are able to mirror force both of these monsters. We top deck Caius. A <laughs> little bit of an awkward break. Opponent draws bottomless. We top deck our third Caius. Okay, so at this point, we've drawn like what? seven cards in a row and thankfully none of them got hit by the deck dev but you know what <laughs> they got us with that deck dev for sure anyway they summon bora bora here would have been much better as an armageddon knight would have been able to send like a sirocco or whatever and they would have had like just a much better position where they have bottomless deck dev plus like ratio plus all this other stuff instead they have to bora attack into this magic cylinder a top deck raiko this turn i magic cylinder the bora Next turn, I Caius for lethal after, of course, heavy storming all of the back row in play. Yep. Yep. Yepers. And there's the Caius. All right. Game three. They get to go first. This is a problem. This is a problem. Going second, not ideal. I will say it. They open double Icarus with Gores. So they have elected to include the Gores in their deck, and they've also got double Icarus. How do they choose to play this turn one? They summon Shura, and they top deck bottomless. So... Here's one thing that I don't really understand. If you're siding in multiple deck devs against a deck, why are you leaving in your bottomless trap holes? That's something I'm curious about because bottomless trap hole is not gonna hit the majority of my deck. You've seen Yellow Baboon, right? 
Yellow Baboon is something that can't be hit by Bottomless. The only thing that you can hit with Bottomless is Caius. That's it. It's the only card in the whole deck. So, I don't know. From the opponent here, I'm probably thinking about setting Icarus Attack and Bottomless, or not setting the Bottomless at all and just leaving Shura. Because the only monster I can, like, summon into Bottomless Trap Hole is Caius. And you have a Gores in your hand. So, you need to keep your Gores live. So, maybe don't set the Bottomless here. I think this is a pretty big misplay from the opponent. They set only the Bottomless, no Icarus. Which is, yeah, I think it's a pretty big misplay from the opponent. We're able to summon Injection Fairy Lily, and this is, like, the best punish in the game for this. Like I mentioned in the deck explanation, Injection Fairy Lily does a really good job at beating over Shura when you predict Kalut. Here, we just pay 2,000, run over the Shura, they take 1,600, they do not collute, so they take the full 16, and here we're able to set all three of our back row, and the opponent's got this dead bottomless, with a dead Gores in hand, and a dead dark arc armed, dead, dead dark, dead dark armed, you know what I'm saying, and now they're probably forced to just set collute, or summon collute, or do something weird with that, and the Icarus attack, yeah, so they set the collute, set the Icarus attack, and we've got solemn judgment for that, so we're big chilling. Summon the rat, they go try to Icarus us, we're going to Solemn. This does limit the number of times we can activate Injection Fairy Lily this game, but thankfully we're only going to need to activate it one more time in order to win. We're going to be able to attack directly for 1400 and then another 400 here. Definitely don't want to pump here yet, because then we put ourselves in a weird like situation where we're going to have to Phoenix Wing Wind Blast stuff. Don't want to be there, don't want to be there for sure. Alright, we attack directly for 400, we set a Dust Tornado. Here, I Dust Tornado their back row in the standby phase in case it is another copy of Icarus Attack. Thus far, I have been playing around Icarus Attack, so it's very possible that their old set and their new set were both Icarus Attack. So I'm going to Dust Tornado it before they get a chance to summon the monster. This does cause a little bit of complications because it does turn on their gores, but they have nothing else that's live, so they just have to pass, and then we have double Wind Blast to force through lethal. This is another reason why Wind Blast is so good, because it's versatile both proactively and defensively. I think it's one of the best trap cards in the metagame right now. It allows you to push through stuff like this. Opponents at 4,000, they have Gores, they think they're safe, and they're just not. Double Wind Blast, GG. Unfortunately for our opponent, El Maverick, that was going to be lights out. Baboon, maybe not getting summoned there, but uh, being a useful discard fodder for, for our Wind Blast. Alright, let's get into the next match. The next match is up against Covizy19. Thankfully, we are vaccinated, double, plus the booster, Moderna, baby, so we win the rock, paper, scissors. Opponent opens up with Jane, Beckoning Light, and Vayu. So they're on some crazy Vayu Sworn deck with Bottomless Trap Hole. There's something I'm thinking throughout this game, and I'm going to tell it to you. My opponent has found an insane amount of room in their deck for random shit, and I don't know what they cut in order to fi find room for all of it. First off, you've got Vayu, right? You've got Beckoning Light. These cards already aren't commonly played in Lightsworn and Bottomless Trap Hole. These, these are three cards already that maybe they play one Beckoning Light, but you'll see later in the match they're playing multiple Beckoning Lights. They've got Bottomless Trap Hole and they've got this other stuff. All right, they're on 42. Okay, but only two extra cards. So what have they cut in order to make room for all of this? We're going we're gonna to start a long list. You'll, you'll see, you'll see. Anyway, my hand is fantastic. I start off with Airbellum plus Cylinder. I've got Brain Control to back it up. So I'm going to summon the Airbellum, set the Cylinder. Opponent draws Heavy Storm. Here's a moment. Here's a moment in time where the opponent did draw Heavy Storm, but they don't go for it. <laughs> they don't go for the Heavy Storm. They just go for Jane Attack. Why? Why would you not Heavy Storm here? Obviously, if I'm summoning Airbellum, I have a protection spell. You gotta know it. You gotta know it. And now you're gonna get big punished. It's just the way it goes. You're gonna get big punished. I'm a magic cylinder this attack. They're gonna set their bottomless. They're gonna be like, oh, okay, it's fine. It's fine. I still got the Jane. No big deal. They're gonna mill two. They mill a second Vayu. Okay, so they've got Lumina. They've got a full Light Sworn engine in their deck. They've got a Vayu. All right, all right. So they've got two Vayus now. Two Vayus plus bottomless plus beckoning plus, okay, okay. They've, they've got some stuff. They've got some stuff. All right, we're gonna brain control the Jane. We're gonna sack for Caius. Caius is going to target the back row. See, the reason I go for this Caius is because normally when they've got Lumina, they've got a full suite of Light Swords. They've got at least seven or eight Light Swords. And the first thing that trims, or that they trim when they do this, is defensive traps. But unfortunately for us, they do have the bottomless trap hole for our Caius. Fair enough, fair enough. We're still going to get the X Saber Airbellum hit in. Unfortunately, we're now two for two on our Airbellum hits hitting Vayus. So I'm like, God. 
Very unfortunate. Whatever, whatever. We've got the Airbellum. They top deck Shura. Okay, so they've got the Shura tech in their deck. So now they've got Beckoning Light. They've got multiple values. They've got Shura. They've got Bottomless Trap Hole. All right, all right. You guys are starting to get the picture. Shura's going to attack over the Airbellum. Now the opponent's hand is actually really, really weak to Gores. So the monster they get here, you'll notice, it's a third value. So they've made room for three values, plus Shura, plus Bottomless, plus multiple Beckoning Lights. All right, I don't, I don't know how they've done it so far, but we'll figure it out. They do attack with the value, and I think this is the second really big misplay from Kovizy19. You, you fucking lose to Gores. Don't attack directly here. You win the long game. You win the long game. If you've got Beckoning Light, I'm assuming you've got Judgment Dragons. I'm assuming you've got Honests. Just don't attack with the value here. Now, you're facing down Gores, which is a huge threat. Opponents got the Beckoning Light. They've got the whatever but yeah i mean that's just it's just the way it is you know the gorge is gonna gonna beat beat over the things and i fortunately topped at caius here too caius is gonna be able to target down the shura banish deal a thousand and i play really passively now that i've seen bottomless trap hole i'm like there's no shot they're not playing mirror force there's no shot so i gotta play around mirror force because if they if i do get mirror force here i do kind of i kind of fucking lose so I've got to attack over with the Caius, and I'm like, it's fine. Now they're under the Abyss. They have to find defense every single turn, or else the Caius is a lethal threat on its own. They don't Mirror Force here, which maybe should have been a tell for me that they don't have it in their deck, but or don't have it, you know, whatever. But they do pick up Torrential Tribute. Okay, so now they've got room for Torrential Tribute, plus Bottomless Trap Hole, plus Triple Value, plus Shura, plus Beckoning Lights. So I, I'm, I'm still, like, kind of processing what's going on here. <laughs> it's fine, though. Our draw, Green Baboon. Not good. Not good. We have no beast monsters in circulation. The baboon's a little awkward. We have multiple rat targets, but no rat, unfortunately, at this point in time. Here, I could switch the gores. I could do it and just go for game, but I play even more passively than I need to. I attack over the Lila. Opponent draws for turn. They find a second beckoning light. So they are playing multiple beckoning lights. They're forced to beckoning light here to pick up a defender. They're going to grab Lila and Lumina, and I think they actually make a really good play here. They go Lumina, Priority, pitch the Lila, and then Chain Torrential. I think this is a really good play. So they pitch the Lila, they Chain Torrential to clear our whole board, and then they're going to be able to bring back either Jane or Lila. Here, if I'm the opponent, I'm bringing back Lila because I want to mill three. I have three values in my grave. I just want to hit that Sirocco. That's all that's in my brain right now. Jane, the 100 attack points, it's not a big difference. Almost every single thing in the format that attacks over a Jane also attacks, or attacks over a Lila also attacks over a Jane. It's like 95% of the stuff that gets commonly played. The only exception is like Shura, which my deck is obviously not playing. I think you want to get Lila here for sure to mill three, but yeah, the opponent, they get Jane, and that's fine. They attack me directly for 1800, and now I'm a little bit punished because I, I could have killed my opponent this game. I could have killed them. I just played really passively, and, and now I'm getting fucked. <laughs> Really skillful play with the Torrential Tribute and face the mill Typhoon. So they have room for Typhoon in their deck as well. So they have Typhoon, Torrential, Bottomless, Double Beckoning, Triple Vayu, Shura, plus Jane. Okay, okay. They've got they've got some they've got some text. They've got some some serious text. I top deck Giant Rat. And now, now I'm thinking, they've got Shuras. That means they most likely don't have Aaron in their deck, right? Because they've got a couple different ways to punish set monsters, but their biggest punish is Shura. I'm thinking they definitely don't have room for Shura, or for Aaron, alongside Shura, alongside Triple Value, alongside Torrential Bottomless, and Typhoon. There's no way they have Aaron in their deck, so I set Giant Rat, and boy do I get fucking punished. They top deck Charge of the Light Brigade, Charge Mills, Sangin, Wolf, and Foolish. So they have room for Sangin in their deck as well. I'm like, what did they cut? There are so many different like cards in here that aren't in your traditional Lightsworn deck, or in your traditional Value deck, and they just have room for all of it. I... I'm, I'm impressed. So they do have Aaron as well. Uh, and that's gonna, that's gonna fuck us up here. Unfortunately for us, we are now the ones under the abyss. Honestly, my too cautious play early in the game cost me this game. And that's, that's on me. I misplayed. I misplayed for sure. Aaron attacks into the giant rat, sends it back into the deck. The rat flips up. The Jane and the wolf attack directly for 3,900. And now I'm under the abyss. I got to make something happen. The opponent mills in the M phase. <laughs> and now we see even more tech. They've not only got room for triple value, bottomless torrential space typhoon, Sangin, double beckoning, and Shura in their deck, but they've got room for main deck cyber dragon. What did they cut? And solemn judgment. None of these cards are normally played in Lightsworn. None of these cards. 
What did they cut? Did they cut solar recharge? They are more than halfway through the deck. They haven't seen solar recharge. They haven't seen whatever. This is the first JD and Honest. I'm, of course, they're playing JD and Honest, right? Because they've got double beckoning. But I just... What what have they cut from their deck? I'm, I'm actually really curious. I'm actually really curious. All right. Our turn, we draw Hamster. Thankfully, we do have Fossil Dyna. If the opponent does attack into our set monster with Aaron, we'll be able to pop their last two monsters because both of those were special summoned. Opponent draws Necrogardner. They've got room for Necrogardner as well in this deck. Okay. Okay. Aaron attacks. Thankfully, Fossil Dyna does flip up. Thankfully, Aaron is not broken. It's not a Mystic Swordsman level two. That would be insane. And then M phase, they do hit Book of Moon, another tech card in their deck, and their first Sirocco. Are they only playing one Sirocco? Are they not playing Greffer? I'm so confused. They have double JD2 in this deck. I this deck list confuses me. It bewilders me for sure. Alright, on our turn, unfortunately, we pick up a rat. A rat doesn't have anything in the deck that we can get that runs over Aaron without costing us life points that we can't really afford to spend right now. Unfortunately, we're forced to set Hamster and pass. And they have room for Burial. On top of all of this, I this deck confuses me. It honestly confuses me. I don't understand it. We're going to we're gonna lose this game in short order. Opponent's going to attack that. We're going to be forced to pop the Necrogarden. And then we're going to top deck another Baboon and just be, just be fucked. <laughs> yep. And that's going to be that. I was like insane charge draw. A little bit of salt for me, but yeah, I did throw that game. In hindsight, I did throw that game, but you know what? It's, it's cool. It's cool. I get to go first this game. Now we see they also have Plague and Chaos Sorcerer. What? What is in this deck? This deck, it it's blowing my mind. I'm like, they have all these Light Swarm monsters. Do they not have Garroth? Do they not have Solar Recharge? Like, what did they cut to make room for all of this? Because they have to have at least, right, Dark Arm Dragon. They have to have that. They have to have another Honest. Like, what? What am I, what is going on with this deck? It has so many different techs in it. All right, we open up with Hamster plus Book plus Caius. We're just feeling great. This is a great opening from us. And here, all of their techs, all of their bricks, the, it's definitely coming back to bite them. One thing I want to note about the opponent's play here is why not summon the Cyber Dragon? I don't really get that. I feel like it's not getting any better, you know? It's not getting any better than right now. I don't understand why you don't Cyber Dragon and try to attack this monster here. Get the light in your graveyard, get your Chaos Sorcerer live ASAP, and setting a monster, I mean, I, I can ignore this. Now all of a sudden your Cyber Dragon's another brick in your hand that's already full of bricks. I don't know. I feel like you have to 100% summon the Cyber I mean, that's the reason you bring in the Cyber Dragon, is the tempo flip on the draw. That's, that's the reason you bring it in going second. I missed what we drew there, but it was probably something busted. We hamster into Raikou, we sighted in the DD Warriors. These are going to be super crucial in this. I don't know. I want to keep my Kaius if possible. I think having the Kaius for the next follow-up set is going to be ideal. A DD Warrior, their monster. Yeah, there we go. And there's the Dark Arm Dragon. They have room for all... What did they cut? I'm so confused. Did they cut Cold Wave? Did they cut Heavy Storm? Like, what What are they cutting? Anyway, uh, they set the second value here. They still don't go for the Cyber Dragon. And I think that if it was right the first time, maybe it was questionably right the first turn, it is 100% right this turn to go for it. I, I don't know why they don't do it. This turn you get a run over the hamster for little no value you trade with the Raikou, no big deal i mean now your chaos sorcerer is live you know what i'm saying like you can go cider cyber dragon plus play you could even blow up the board if you wanted to you don't even need to set this beckoning light here that's another thing i don't think you should set this beckoning light until you have a graveyard set up i think that's that's a bit of a misplay as well a uh, little bit of questionable play this game from the opponent but hey we're able to pick up our advantage Raikou pop that kaius banished this you know how we do i say gores you don't have it even if they do have gores, we have gores of our own. We have book for the hamster. We have a lot of ways of dealing with the gores. We have the Dinah. So I'm not too worried about it. Opponent picks up Grand Mole. What? What is in this deck? This deck is blowing my mind, like, constantly. And now at this point, it's a little too little too late for the Cyber Dragon to get any value. They're going to special it. They're going to normal the plague. We're going to book the Cyber Dragon. And it's going to be curtains for the opponent. One thing they could have done, I'll say in the next turn. Yeah, we, we, we find Fossil Dinah, so we're able to attack with the Dinah. We're going to go... Caius over that, that of the plague, and hamster direct. Opponent goes to 2900. So here they pick up wolf. Another brick. Another brick. Their deck is all mono bricks. It's the mono brick deck. One thing they can do here, they do end up conceding, but one thing they actually can do, which isn't isn't that bad, is they can grand mole, bounce our Dinah, special summon the Chaos Sorcerer, banish the Caius, and then they're actually just fine. They have Grand Mole plus Chaos Sorcerer. That's not a bad place to be. So I think this is a premature concession from them. I think they played that game a little bit shoddy. I'm going to be honest. But, you know, hey, we take those. We take those. We're playing this garbage baboon deck. We need the free wins when we get them, all right? We need the free wins. 
This game, our hand looks pretty good. Our opponent's hand also looks pretty good. They have D Prison on top of all of this. How do they have room for D Prison? Torrential, Mirror Force, Bottomless, Solemn Judgment, Double Beckoning Light, Double JD, Honest, fucking Neospatian Grammel, Triple Vayu, Multiple Shuras, Dark Arm Dragon, Chaos Sorcerer, Main Deck Cyber Dragon. What is going on with this deck list? I don't understand it. I am shook. I don't know how they managed to fit all of this different tech in it, but hey, worked out for them. They summon Jane, they mill and face Aaron plus JD. On our turn, we pick up the Grammel. Not very useful here. We are going to set the Hamster and we're going to set Wind Blast plus Book of Moon. I don't really know what my plan was here. I probably should have set the Raiko in hindsight because if they don't actually make this play, this specific play right here where they, they heavy storm their own back row, uh, Wind Blasting the Jane is not actually that good. I was maybe hoping they'd summon another monster, but... Uh, yeah, so they go for Heavy Storm, and this is another thing. Like, if you're gonna Heavy Storm, maybe don't set the D-Prison with the Jane. Or maybe just, like, summon Jane Pass and hold the D-Prison. I feel like this is, like, a missed sequencing. You know you have Heavy Storm. You know that's a card you want to use. I I don't know. Maybe just set the Heavy Storm, then. I I don't know. It's it's kind of a questionable play. Here, they're gonna Heavy Storm. I'm gonna chain Wind Blast. They special the Sidra. Sidra. Normal the Shura. Get a little greedy. Attack into the Hamster. We're able to get the Raikou from our deck. They're going to attack over the hamster with the side route. I think this is a smart play. Don't leave the hamster in play. On our turn, we are going to be forced to flip the Raikou, target the Shura. Don't want that sticking around, causing us problems. We mill DD Warrior plus Giganti, so it looks like we've boarded in the DD Warriors yet again in game three. And here I'm going to set Torrential, hoping, praging, that they will normal summon the Jane that I know is on top of their deck. They've gotten a little greedy in a couple points in this match, but here they don't get greedy. They play it safe. They attack over with the Cyber Dragon. Smart play. And then they set the Vayu. On our turn, we pick up Cyber Dragon, which is a good draw, but not great. Unfortunately, making a Chimera tech still doesn't either trade or beat over the Jane because the Jane goes up to 2100. So we'll be forced to Torrential in that instance, but uh, we still we still go for it. I think it's still right to clear the Cyber Dragon. Graham will back the Vayu to their hand. Attack directly for 2000. Opponent finds D Prison, multiple D Prison. <laughs> so their deck has multiple bottomless, multiple D Prison, Torrential, Solemn, Mirror Force, multiple Beckoning, Triple Vi, multiple Shura, Jane, Plague Spreader, Chaos Sorcerer, all of the fucking Dark Arm Dragon. Somehow they've made this all fit. I'm, I'm honestly really confused what they cut because it's not making sense to me. I'm doing like the math in my head and I'm like, you need to be playing like 48, 49 cards to fit all the right stuff with all of this extra tech in it. Of course, we're forced to Torrential on the Jane. Opponent sets the D Prison and passes. Here, I attack with the Dinah, and I'm interested to hear what you guys think I should do here. They do D Prison. Do you guys chain Book? This is the real hard-hitting question. I don't chain Book. I just let it get banished, and I just set the Book. I think the Book has maybe a little bit higher upside here, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's better to keep the Dinah. Maybe it's a little bit obvious that their hand is weaker, loses to the Dyna, because they were electing to deprison it in the first place. So, I don't know. It might be right to book it there. Anyway, opponent summons a Vayu, attacks us directly. On our turn, we're able to draw, uh, we draw Gores, which is awkward, obviously, because we didn't book our Dyna, so now the, now the book's in play and makes our Gores dead. It's, it's just awkward. We're able to attack over the Vayu. We don't use the effect because we just want to clear that thing. Uh, opponent draws Wolf, and of course, when you play a deck with all these bricks, you're going to draw them. That's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. You want to have live stuff, high activity. I say it all the time. I say it in all my videos, but your decks want to be high activity. You don't want to be playing like 17,000 bricks because you're just going to draw them. It's just the way it goes. <sighs> they draw their own Grammel. Nothing too, nothing too crazy here. We pick up Rescue Cat and we make a pretty big move this turn. We go for Goyo Guardian, try to steal their monster. I'm pretty sure at this point, their monster is not a Raikou. Otherwise they wouldn't deprison the Fossil Dyna. So, we are going to take the Vayu. We are going to attack directly with the Air Bellum. We're going to hit Wolf. Again, Air Bellum just hitting bricks from the opponent. Main phase two, we're going to make Gotems. And then we're going to pass. Opponent picks up. Second Wolf. They have multiple Wolves. On top of all this other stuff, they're playing multiple Wolves. I'm just shook. I'm like, did they cut Solar Recharge? What did they cut? Did they cut Card Trooper? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. They are able to attack us with the Grammel, but we have Book for it, thankfully. And on the next turn, we pick up Yellow Baboon. Worst draw in our deck at any given moment. Vayu attacks over the Grammel, 3100 direct. 
Set the second book. Opponent draws a Typhoon. GG's are had. GG's Covizy 19. I'm, I'm interested in your deck list. It's kind of wild. It kind of blows my mind. I couldn't get a solid read on it in, in, at any given point. I think there was actually multiple Janes shown at one point. I, I forget. I forget. Anyway, match number three. All right, all right, all right. Match number three. We've got Mr. Maples. We've played him before on the channel. Powerful duelist. He is on X Saber. And we are on whatever. I get a little bit salty in this match. Full spoiler. Full spoiler. I get a little bit salty. Some salt is had. I start off with Airbellum plus Judgment plus Brain Control. I have a really solid starting hand. Opponent also has a really solid starting hand. They have Cold Wave Monk, which is huge. So, we're kind of in this uh, this interesting spot. I do win the Rock, Paper, Scissors. I draw Heavy Storm. Great card. Summon Airbellum, set Solemn Judgment, pass. Now the opponent elects to go for Monk. Doesn't Cold Wave. I think this is a catastrophic misplay from the opponent. I think if you're going to go for Monk, you 1000% Cold Wave first. There is no world in which you don't Cold Wave first here. I don't, I don't see it. You want to Arcanite, you want to pop both my cards. Either that or you want to Urbellum, you want to attack over my card, and you want to attack directly with the Airbellum and hit two cards out of my hand. So it, it's really uh, up to you whether you want to pop the back row or hit uh, an extra card in my hand, but yeah, you 100% you Cold Wave here first. I don't think there's any world in which you don't. Yeah, and then the Monk walks into Solemn Judgment. Unfortunately for the opponent, they misplayed and it uh, fucks up their opening. I mean, that's just, that's just that. There's no reason not to do that. Now we've had, what is it, two opponents not respect my lone back row plus Airbellum start and get fucked for it. So, I mean, that's just, <laughs> hey, they Gold Sark for Cat here. Yeah, Gold Sark would have been a Cat in play if you had sequenced it a different way, but here we are. Now I, I rip, I rip Airbellum and I fucking heavy storm my opponent and they have no protection because they set the Cold Wave for some fucking reason. And we're going to summon the Airbellum and just fuck them up. Actually, I understand why they set the, I understand why they set the Cold Wave because they, uh, they gold start for cat and they want to make sure the cold wave doesn't get lost to the air bellum. we're gonna be able to attack directly with both they're gonna lose both of their cards and here i'm feeling great but the opponent top decks fucking mirror force of course and so i'm in a situation where i'm like huh i can attack directly with both my monsters or i could summon the injection fairly go for game or i could tribute one of my monsters for a kaius banish their lone back row hmm what do i want to do do i want to play around torrential or do i want to play around mirror force what do i want to play around all right. Also, if I tribute someone for Caius and they have bottomless trap hole, kind of sucks. Hmm. What do I want to play around? If I summon the injection fairy lily, I attack directly. Maybe they have a way to put a couple monsters in play and they can deal enough damage to kill me. So I'm a little bit wary about all of these things. I'm a little bit wary. I like to go for a very, very safe play, which is just two turn clock my opponent. Airbellum's attack directly. What can they do? They mirror force. <laughs> Of course, they top deck the one Mirror Force, which is uh, the only thing that really punishes us for not going for the Caius there, unfortunately. And uh, main phase two, we're forced to summon Injection Fairly. Then they top deck Solemn Judgment. On top of that, they're able to get the Rescue Cat. And here I'm thinking, okay, if they Rescue Cat for Raikou plus Airbellum, they make Catastrophe, they break the Injection Fairly. I have Brain Caius, so I'm big chilling. If they Rescue Cat, they get double Airbellum. That fucking sucks because then they put us down to 800 and our brain control is dead and we're top decking, but they will be losing both air bellums. So we're top decking their top deck and we're be chilling. I'm like, ah, I'll take that. I'll take that. So they go double air bellum here. Air bellum attacks the injection fairy lily. We are going to go back down to 800 or not back down, but we are going to go down to 800. And here we're in a situation where we're like, we need to top a monster and we don't we top Phoenix wing wind blast. And I'm like, well, this sucks. Do I set two cards to play around Space Typhoon? Do I set whatever? And I elect to actually set two cards to play around Space Typhoon. This Yellow Baboon's not doing us any favors. It's going to be a fine pitch to the Wind Blast. Opponent tops a monster. And of course, they have the Solemn Judgment to back it up. So we do lose this game, which is fucking insane. I, I can't believe we lost this game. And this is where all of my salt comes in because they top decked, what was it? Three perfect cards in a row that were like, they needed to be those specific three perfect cards. And I played around like a large majority of cards here. And I honestly stand by my plays for the most part, but like, come on. They just had to happen to draw like literally a perfect monster for lethal. No fall troll, no dead shit, no fucking raggy guru shit. They topped like specifically Emrys Blade. Ah, oh, it's so tilting. And then I, I mauled in the chat a little bit. Yeah, you guys know, you guys know. I'm like, God, I was like, if you sync with Raiko, you lost the game because I brain fucking Kaius you. Anyway, yeah. And I was like, you have a bunch of one-outers, it's all this other stuff. Yeah. 
after after not going for the cold wave monk that they opened, I, I was tilted. I was tilted. Anyway, 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 my tilt, it gets to me, it gets to me. And I'm like, I can't lose this match. I can't lose this match. I will mauled indefinitely if I lose this match. I have to play perfectly from here on out. Unfortunately, my hand is really monster heavy. Thankfully, Phoenix Wind Windblast is such a fucking goaded card that it's going to be able to interact with just about anything our opponent is trying to do. And here I need to make a decision. Am I going to set Raikou? Am I going to summon Airbellum like I did last game? I like to go for the set Raikou. And the reason I go for the set Raikou is because in this matchup, Airbellum's actually a huge fucking liability. They can use something like Brain Control or Mind Control, take my Airbellum, and then summon an X-Saber and Special Fall Trolls and go the fuck off and kill me. This is important because if you look at our opponent's hand, me going for not the same opening that I went for in the previous two games, they would have fucked us. They would have fucked us hard with the brain control play. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good that I didn't go for that. I went for the more more conservative Raikou plus Wind Blast. Okay, opponent summons Monk. I allow this to happen. I allow this to happen. Here, I let the cat get summoned. I allow this to happen. I'm like, the only way I get punished is if they have specifically Fall Troll. All right? Because they're going to be able to get double Air Bellum, right? In this moment, they'll make an Arcanine Magician. I'll Wind Blast the Arcanine Magician. The Air Bellum trades one for one with my Raiko, and I'm fine taking that two for two trade, or two for three trade even, because then my Air Bellum's going to get to attack direct. Unfortunately for us, they do have the Fall Troll, and uh, yeah, they open Monk plus Spell plus <laughs> Fall Troll. Now two games, two games. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. We're going to get pretty fucked up here, no lie. They're going to go for the Arcanite. I'm going to be forced to Wind Blast, discard my Caius. The reason I discard Caius is because all these other cards are going to be live, in the instance that they hit us with double air bellum, which is what they are going to end up doing. They don't go for Gotham's in main phase one. They attack with the fall troll. Here I pop the fall troll because that's the only thing they can synchro with. I mail DD warrior, which is something that I cited in this matchup specifically for like Emmer's blades and Sangins and whatnot. And we're going to lose two cards out of our hand. We're down bad. No cap. We're down really, really bad. Opponent is going to lose one of their air bellums, but we need, we need to make something work. We need to make something work. All right. We summon the Exile Force. We pop. We set Torrential. We pass. Opponent's got Bottomless plus Book plus Sangin plus Ragagura. If I'm the opponent, I'm 1000% summoning Ragagura here. Opponent summons Sangin instead. Sangin has nothing left to search. Your cat and your monk are gone. Summon the Ragagura. Get back the Air Billum. Apply real pressure. The Sangin doesn't do anything. Attacks with the Sangin. Fine. I top deck Caius and I'm just like, bruh, bruh, pain. Opponent summons Ragagura and I'm just like, Oh my god. I'm getting plussed on, and they topped another Ragagura. How am I going to win this game? How am I going to win this game? They add back the Fall Troll. Okay, this is mistake number one, I think. They're not applying the right pressure. They're not applying the right pressure. The Fall Troll's not how you're beating me. It's not. You can beat me with just Air Bellum Attack. That's all you need. Go for the Air Bellum Attack. That's what you needed to go for last turn. You would have won the game if you had gone for it this time. Played a little too passively. Thankfully, we top deck Giant Rat, and we're back in this game somehow. Miraculously, we're back in this game. Because Giant Rat goes very well into their back row. They elect not to Book of Moon my Giant Rat, which is also huge. If they had booked it, they would have been able to summon Ragagura plus Special Fall Troll plus go the fuck off. Of course, we had Torrential for all of that, but still, if they had booked the Rat, they would have been able to go for all of that. And force my Torrential. Here they summon the Ragagura. They top Space Typhoon, which is big, which is actually big for them. That, that might come up. So they Ragagura back, Air Bellum. All right. Ragagura comes back for Air Bellum. This turn we top Raikou. Not ideal, but we are able to clear one of their two remaining X Saber names that we need to get out of play. At this point, I'm like, they have to have Bottomless. It's just like guaranteed. They have to have Bottomless. They have to have one other dead back row, maybe a Starlight Road or something. That's, what's, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. I'm not thinking about Book of Moon. I'm not thinking about Space Typhoon. These are the cards I'm not thinking about. All right, I set the Raikou. Now, the opponent summons the Air Bellum here. This is an interesting moment. This is an interesting moment. Because, 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 opponent has a few different lines. Something they could have done, something they could have actually done, was crash the Sangin, search for a full Helm Knight, main phase two special Cyber Dragon, special full Helm, or normal full Helm Knight, make an eight star, do something like that, Typhoon the back row, go the fuck off. They could have Stardust plus Bottomless plus Book against my literally set monster plus Rat plus whatever's left in my hand. They could have done a lot of different things. They could have synchroed main phase one. They could have typhooned our back row first, summoned the air bellum, synchroed main phase one. They could have done a lot of different stuff, but they just, uh, they just didn't. <laughs> I don't know why. They attacked the giant rat. We're able to get fossil Dinah 
and now they're locked out of the rest of the turn and more or less out of the rest of the game. On our turn, we're able to pick up a Dust Tornado. Raikou is going to hunt down the Air Bellum. We're going to be able to sack the Raikou for the Caius. The Caius is going to target the Sangin, and now their whole board is gone, and they're locked under the Fossil Dyna. <sighs> somehow, somehow after going down horrendous, we're able to make it back into this game. I think the opponent made a few sequencing errors, had a few different lines they could have gone for, and, and ultimately they got punished for it. Now, we attack directly for 1,200. We set our Dust Tornado. The opponent isn't even going to end phase space our Dust Tornado, which has them super down bad. Mind Control is the card found. Mind Control is not going to do shit against Fossil Dyna. So we're big chilling. Big chilling. One thing the opponent could have done, and probably should have done, at any point, was book my Fossil Dyna. Because if I ever flip my Fossil Dyna, it was Special Summon. And now I'm not sure if it actually destroys itself. I'm pretty sure it does. I'm pretty sure it destroys itself. I need to double check that ruling, but I'll, I'll do it at a later time. Someone in the comments let me know. Let me know if that's a, that's a ruling. Anyway, Fossil Dyna attacks directly, and I top Trap Dust Shoot just in time for their XF Saber Full Helm Knight, whatever the fuck this card is called. Just in time. Just in time, because I had no outs to that. I would have had to tarantula my own Fossil Dyna, and then it would have been back to square one. Fortunately for us, we sack our opponent like they sacked us in game one, and all of my salt... I, I'm starting to feel pretty bad for being salty about game one, because we do, we do sack our opponent pretty hard this game. We sacked them pretty hard. Of course, they played in a way that was not great. Here they heavy storm just to see our back rows, and then we go to game three. Yeah, they could have. I think they could have booked the booked the fossil dine. I think it would have killed it. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Game three, anyway. Opponent opens up Cold Wave Rescue Cat again. They open up the nuts for the third game in a row, and I'm just like, all right, at this point. Now they have the start with X Six Saber Air Bellum or. Er, X Saber Arabellum at D Prison, and I'm like, it's gotta be bottomless, right? It's gotta be bottomless. Nope. Nope. <laughs> of course it's D Prison. I play into my own opening. It be your own openings. It be your own openings. Alright, here I'm forced to set Dust Shoot and pass. I know I'm gonna lose at least one card to this Arabellum. I'm gonna get super fucked. Thankfully, I have Dust Shoot for the Rescue Cat, but I noticed their hand is insane. It's got Cold Wave, it's got Gold Sark, it's got Gotham, and it's got Ragagura. So, they've got a lot of action. For sure they've got a, a lot of action. And I, I'm going to make it a high priority of mine to banish this X Saber Arabellum with one of my DD Warriors. Thankfully we have two of them, so even if they attack directly and pick one of them off, we're going to be big chilling. Here they cold wave for Monk, instead of cold waving for the cat that they put back into their deck. Or not cold wave for Monk, what is the fucking Gold Sark. Gold Sark for Monk. You guys know what I'm saying. Anyway, they hit, I believe, Caius. Yeah, they hit Caius, which is great because that's the worst card in our hand, thankfully. Here, we go for the DD Warrior, banish their Airbellum. We know the last three cards in their hand are going to be completely dead once this Airbellum gets banished. And we just pray. We just pray that over the next few turns, they don't draw a spell card. Because then they're going to be able to Cold Wave Monk Cat us, and there's just going to be nothing we're going to be able to do about that. They top deck Bottomless, thank goodness. We go for the Airbellum, but they do have Bottomless, and we top deck Book of Moon just in time to protect ourselves from the Monk. Thankfully, thankfully. So for th those of you guys who don't know, the way Summoner Monk works is it activates when it's summoned to switch to defense position. You don't get turn player priority to activate the pitch effect because it has that first effect that starts to chain. Then I can chain Book of Moon to that, and then they won't get a chance to summon out Cat from the deck, etc., etc. They do get the Monk this turn. They drew Sangin. They're going to attack us directly with Sangin. I'm perfectly fine with this. This means that I know their full hand. That means they only have one spell, and that's Cold Wave, and they're not going to be able to Cold Wave and then Monk. On our turn, we pick up a very lucky draw, which is Cyber Dragon. We are going to attack over the Sangin. Here, I'm just like, whatever they search with Sangin, if they search the cat, that means they're not monkeying into it. If they search for Emmer's Blade, I've got the DD Warrior, I've got the Raikou, I've got whatever for it. If they search anything else, like, there's not really much else in the deck that they could search for that I really give a fuck about besides cat, and they already have a way to find the cat. So, we're big chilling. So, I attack over the Sangin. The Sangin searches for Full Helm Knight. I'm like, okay, Full Helm Knight complicates things. I can no longer set Raikou, because Full Helm Knight can attack over Raikou, then special summon itself back because the way it's worded is it only needs to destroy a monster by battle. It doesn't need to send it to the graveyard. So chain link two will be, I believe, or no, chain link XX Saber Full Helm Knight is chain link one. Raikou's chain link two. You you get the idea. Raikou pops the Full Helm Knight. They special summon back the Full Helm Knight that got destroyed by the Raikou effect. So I'm forced to set my DD Warrior. Unfortunate. Thankfully, the opponent doesn't draw a spell. And thankfully, double thankfully, they draw the actual uh, only uh, summoner monk target in their deck, which is Rescue Cat. So we're big chilling. We're big, big chilling.
They read the Raikou, they attack into it with the full Helm Knight, and thankfully we are able to banish that shit. Get that fucking full Helm Knight shit out of here. Our play does pay off holding the Raikou. And now we're just like big Prage. Big, big Prage. I have a couple of options. I could set the Wind Blast, set the Raikou, or I could just set the Wind Blast. Here I like to set both because if they have the spell card, we're losing anyway, and the Raikou is going to get discarded nonetheless, so I might as well just set both and pray for the best, and the best happens. They pick up yet another monster and are stunlocked for yet another turn. Now, on this turn, they have a play. They have a play. They could Emmer's Blade. They could Emmer's Blade attack into my Cyber Dragon. Try to get their Godom's Ecall live. One thing that I could do, of course, is Book of Moon the Emmer's Blade, but it does force the Book of Moon, which is big. It is big. That does come up later on. Instead, they like to set the Emmer's Blade instead of trying to crash it to turn on the Godom's Ecall to try and do all the stuff. And we pick up DD Warrior and we're able to punish. This is very unfortunate for the opponent. The Raikou can now target the Godom's Ecall, which would have been turned on if they had gone for that crash play. Either that or they would have cleared the book. And now DD Warrior is going to be able to clear the Emmer's Blade and we're going to be able to attack for 2300, putting our opponent super low. This has been a crazy game. There's been a lot of different plays, a lot of stuff to analyze. The opponent picks up Cyber Dragon, which is huge. It's very big for them. They cold wave here. But, 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 because they didn't clear the Book of Moon earlier, we are able to chain Book on our Raikou, which is big. Well, it would be big if the opponent didn't have some powerful moves to be made. All right, here I'm like, if they just have Monk, Cat, we're fucked. But if they don't have another spell card, maybe their best play is like Summon a Cyber Dragon, which ends up being or maybe they drew the rescue cat which it ends up being so thankfully that's the case they go rescue cat grab double air bellum they make the right play here they attack with the stardust dragon first over the cyber dragon and then they attack with the air bellum over the raiko and then i elect to mill only unfortunately i do mill my necrogarna or not necrogarna um neospatian grammal which isn't out to the stardust but i do still have the phoenix wing wind blast keep that in mind at the end phase the air bellum is going to die I draw for turn, I don't set the hamster because I want my wind blast to be live in the case they go for lethal, so I just pass. Now, here I make a crazy play, and this is a crazy play that only, only powerful duelists like myself have the foresight to see. I'm just kidding, this is a pretty obvious play, I mean, uh, at least, at least in my, in my, uh, might seem a little obvious now in hindsight, but, but yeah. Uh, they're going to attack me with the Stardust Dragon, and I am not going to wind blast it. Because, because, because in my deck there exist cards, there exist items, both Brain Control and Magic Cylinder, which win the game immediately if the Stardust Dragon attacks again, or if they leave it in play. Because the opponent is at 2500. We're going to take this 2500, and I am going to elect not to win Blast the Stardust here in the end phase or anything, and I do top deck Brain Control and steal this match. I have no fucking clue how I won this match. Our opponent opened the nuts, like... I, I should not have won this match like 80 times over, but hey, have a strong game plan, stick to it, burn the opponent out, do what you got to do, play the cards you're dealt, hope the opponent doesn't play perfectly when you're playing maybe a worse deck or they open really well, hope they mess up, capitalize on their mistakes. If there's anything to learn about this match in particular, it's definitely crash your Emmer's Blade when you get the chance. Don't overlook that play. That's a very powerful play. It would have would have altered this game, I think. It would have for sure altered this game, because then the Raikou's not milling these three, and then I'm not drawing the brain control specifically when I draw it. I mean, it just changes the game entirely. So, yeah. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about the deck. Let me know what you guys think about the baboon, burn, beat down, beast down, whatever. Leave a like, leave a comment. Yeah, have a good day. E3 Yu-Gi-Oh! signing off. Peace.